Welcome to the 2017 Charlotte International Auto Show. Now, every year I crawl through all 400 odd makes and models to see what's new, what's been redesigned, and what's hot in the industry. So come on, let's check out what they've got this year. One of the hottest trends in the automotive industry right now is all of the safety technology, like Nissan's Intelligent Mobility System. Now, this is all of the electronic babysitters, the driver's aids like blind spot monitoring, lane departure warnings, 360 degree cameras so that you really shouldn't hit anything, even collision braking that will keep you from hitting another car or another pedestrian. Basically, the automotive industry has given up completely on our ability as drivers. But you know, with the crazy traffic that most people have to commute in and the realities of distractions, this technology is gonna keep us safer. And more importantly, this is the technology when combined is going to lead to self-driving cars. Now, Google is already testing self-driving cars using these integrated systems, and it's probably only gonna be a decade or less before those self-driving cars are available for you and me to purchase on the retail market. Right now, this is the hottest thing in the industry, and it is the number one most requested feature of cars with car buyers in 2017 and 2018. gone so far with the safety technology to put it in nearly every model they have in their lineup, even in the most basic trim levels. Now, that either means that they're really concerned about everyone's safety or they've completely given up on us as drivers. Now, one of the vehicles that has the new Toyota safety technology is their brand new CHR. Now, this vehicle is part of a new trend of vehicles that I call micro SUVs. They're really not SUVs, but they're not quite cars either, but they give you the benefits of the higher ride height of an SUV, but without all the fuel efficiency problems, you still get a nice small car. The CHR stands for Coupe High Rider. The Japanese named this, and I think a little was lost in the translation, but it really is a neat little car. And the target demographic for it is new car buyers who just need something small and fuel efficient and very economical, and also the empty nesters who also don't need a lot of space, but enjoy the higher ride height, and it's easier to get in and out of. So let's get in and check it out. This CHR is actually really very roomy, given how small it is. Now, in the back seat, you've actually got a lot of room, but because the windows are a little bit small, if you have any passengers that are claustrophobic, be sure to tell them to call shotgun. But you do get cup holders in the doors back there, and that's awesome. 
The only downside to Toyota, they give you all the great safety technology, but what they haven't provided is the full integration with your smartphone that a lot of younger, especially car buyers want to have. They do not offer Apple CarPlay or Android Auto like most of the other manufacturers. So they may lose some market share to Honda, which has adapted all of the cool smartphone technology in addition to a lot of the safety technology. So it's kind of a trade-off, but you know you can never go wrong with the dependability of a Toyota. Now if the styling is just a little too funky for you, or you absolutely have to have the true smartphone integration, Honda came out with a competitive vehicle two years ago, the Honda HRV. You can also take a look at the very upscale Mazda CX-3, which is really fun to drive and looks a lot like a luxury vehicle. In January, Ford is coming out with the Echo Sport, and Kia even has the new Nero, which came out in 2017. It's a little bit more expensive, pushing the upper 20s, but it is all-wheel drive and a hybrid vehicle. So in this new segment of micro SUVs, you've got a lot of great choices. This is the hottest, fastest growing segment in the automotive industry. Another exciting new vehicle this year is the Alfa Romeo Giulia. Now it's a 2017 model and Alfa Romeo, if you follow vehicles in Europe, Alfa is known for a sporty, fun vehicle that rivals anything from BMW and Audi. FCA vehicles normally are about as authentic Italian as Olive Garden. And when Alfa decided to bring the Giulia to the United States, we were a little worried because the original plan was to build the vehicle from the standard global menu of Chrysler parts. Thankfully, that guy got fired. And what we have from Alfa is a truly and uniquely Italian vehicle. Even the engines have been designed and built in Italy based on a design for the Ferrari California. Everything inside the Giulia is also very Italian and very upscale. Almost nothing has come from the cheap and crappy plastic bin from Chrysler. You have beautiful leather, very, very clean finish, simple controls, lots of leather, beautiful red stitching. This is definitely an Italian shoe. Now the Julia comes in two different models. This happens to be the Quadrifoglio model. And you might think that that stands for all wheel drive, but it doesn't. Quadrifoglio is Italian for really freaking fast. The Ferrari inspired motor makes 505 horsepower. It's a V6 twin turbo that's gonna blow away most of your stuff from BMW and Audi. It definitely is designed to compete with the BMW M3. Even the regular Julia model has a 280 horsepower motor that's gonna be right up there with your average three series BMW and your Audi A4. So I'm really excited for this new model from Alfa Romeo. If you're in the market for a entry level small luxury sedan, Alfa is probably not something you've even heard of, but it definitely needs to be on your list. The other vehicle that Alfa Romeo has brought us for 2018 is their new Stelvio SUV that's designed to compete with the Porsche Macan and the Jaguar F-Pace. Now the Stelvio is named after a famous mountain pass in Italy that ascends to 9,000 feet and has over 48 hairpin turns. In other words, my kind of road. And with 280 horsepower and Alpha's typical tight responsive steering, this SUV should be able to handle any mountain road you throw at it. Probably the most exciting new vehicle here at the auto show is the new 2018 Kia Stinger. Now I know what you're thinking. A vehicle that looks like this and is called a Stinger from Kia. Aren't these the same people that brought us the dancing hamster? 
Well, according to CEO Justin Sohn, this vehicle represents a totally new era from Kia. This is going to be a rear wheel drive sports sedan that will come in either a 2.0 turbo or a V6 twin turbo. This will compete with the Audi S5 Sport Wagon and the BMW 440i Grand Coupe. This is a pre-production vehicle, so they're not actually gonna let me get into it, but if they were to say, loan me one of these cars, I would be happy to test it out. Like say, on the racetrack? Either way, really excited for this new vehicle, the Kia Stinger. They're due out at the end of 2017, early 2018. This thing's gonna to top out around $50,000, which is about 20,000 less than a lot of its competitors. Definitely should be on your radar. Arguably the most competitive segment in the automotive industry is the mid-size sedan. And Honda has dominated this segment with the all new, completely redesigned 2018 Honda Accord. It's got a bold new look, tons of new technology, but it also has a new power plant. It's powered by a 2.0 four-cylinder turbo. So gone is the old V6. And unfortunately, the turbocharged motor does suffer from the typical turbo lag, but it gets 33 miles to the gallon. So what are you gonna do? Now, as I said, Honda has put a ton of new technology into the new 2018 Accord. You get all of the Honda Sense safety technology and your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto full smartphone integration. Honda has always had the best, hands down, most robust and easy to use infotainment system, and it's only getting better. So you can change your settings, you can navigate, you can integrate your phone. It does everything on this beautiful big screen right here. Between that and the really cushy, comfy driver's seat, beautifully apportioned interior, plus Honda's reliability. If you're in the market for a midsize sedan, start here. Not to be outdone, of course, Toyota went and redesigned their midsize sedan, the 2018 Camry. Now, the Camry is in its eighth generation and the 35th model year, but there is nothing on this car that carries over from the previous generation except the Toyota emblem. Now, it doesn't have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but you do get all of Toyota safety technology and three different power plants, including a 3.5 liter V6 engine and a hybrid model that gets over 50 miles to the gallon. And with an available two-tone roof, dual exhaust with quad tips and a bright red leather interior, this is not your usual family sedan. Toyota is definitely going places. And if neither of those suit you, Hyundai has redesigned the Sonata as well for 2018. Or you could try its cousin, the Kia Optima, or the Nissan Altima, or even the sporty Mazda 3. As I said, this is the most competitive segment in the market, and you've got a lot of really great choices. Another redesign for 2018 that is worth mentioning is the Hyundai Elantra GT, their little hatchback. Now, to me, the styling is a little meh, but you get a lot of bang for your buck. This thing has a ton of room back here, and you get a lot of great options for very little money. You can get an optional panoramic sunroof, you get all the safety technology and smartphone integration, and you can get heated and cooled seats. 
Where else can you get air conditioned seats for $25,000? That is what Hyundai is known for. Bang for your buck. We can't talk about 2018 redesigns without talking about the 2018 Honda Odyssey. Could you get a cooler minivan? I mean, Honda has redefined minivan and actually made it cool. They have an app called, Are We There Yet? So instead of your kids yelling, are we there yet? They can just download an app onto their phone and check the distance and time to arrival themselves. Honda just keeps making the Odyssey better and better. And when a race car driver likes your minivan better than everything else in your lineup, you know you did it right. Now, if you are on the market for a flagship, really big, cushy, comfy luxury sedan, you might be thinking about Lexus, you might think about the Mercedes S-Class or the BMW 7 Series. What might not cross your mind is the Genesis G90. Genesis is the luxury brand that spun off from Hyundai last year and spun off they did in style. Come here and look at this. Inside, it's absolutely ridiculous. Come on. In the back seat here, I have all these controls. I've got my own nice little display screen here, and so does the other passenger. I've got all the controls that I would ever need. I can spin through my radio stations. I can control my butt warmers and coolers. I could probably drive the car from back here. This gives new definition to the term backseat driver. It's like being in first class on an airplane, except there's actually more space and it's more comfortable. I'm just gonna take a nap. You can come back for me later. My pick for the 2017 Auto Show is the 2018 Mazda MX-5 Miata RF. Now, I know normally I, my pick of the show is something a little more practical, something a little more family oriented, but I just couldn't help myself this year. There are so many amazing things about this little car, and you know I can't resist a good sports car. Come check out this Miata. so many options on this car and it is still at a heart a Miata so that means it comes with three pedals and you can drive it sideways now I have actually bought several of these cars this year for my clients all of the women ironically my three pedal divas because it's one of the few true pure sports car roadsters out there so 
you know, other than the Fiat Spider, which came out last year, which is a little more of a, let's just kind of gently tool around, not tear up a racetrack kind of car. For reliability and bang for your buck, you have never done better in the sports car department than a Miata. And look at this color. This is called ceramic. It's kind of a flattish, grayish white. It's really unusual. The only other car I have seen this on is in fact a Porsche 911 for like three times the price. So, you know, if you want a nice midlife crisis, this is definitely the way to go. give kudos to all of Mazda because Mazda while they give you safety technology they give you all the amenities you want and you actually get very luxury looking cars for your money Mazda is still about the driving their safety technology is not obtrusive it doesn't interfere they truly believe that the number one safety feature in a car is the driver where have you guys heard that before? So Mazda is the only manufacturer that has not lost their faith in the drivers. They believe in driving, they believe in us. So thank you, Mazda. Driving matters. come to the infamous WTF award presenting the Chevy Spark. I don't have a problem with the Chevy Spark as a car. What I am questioning is the choice of mint green as the color. It looks like a little scoop of mint chocolate chip ice cream except without any of the chocolatey minty sugary goodness. I mean I would be afraid that it would just melt as you drove down the road. So, Chevy, what were you thinking? What the f joining me for the 2017 Charlotte International Auto Show. Now, if you're in the market for a new used car, but you're a little overwhelmed by all the different makes and models on the market, no worries. Here's what you do. Just go to my website, set up a time to talk to me. I help my clients pick the perfect car based on their unique lifestyle, budget, and personality. Then I handle all the legwork and negotiating for you. All you gotta do, sign papers, take keys. It's super easy. Until next year, folks, I'm out of here. I'm going to go find my Mini and head home. Drive safely.